An Orientalist once embarked on a profound quest for truth, seeking answers from various religions. He delved into Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity, and even Islam. No matter where he turned or whom he asked, his questions were met with responses that felt like empty air, leaving him unfulfilled. A learned scholar himself, he often found that he knew more than those he questioned. In his youth, he had indulged in all manner of wrongdoing, but a deep yearning for truth had led him to a path of piety and sincerity. Despite his extensive knowledge, he remained unsatisfied, his soul still seeking something more. With the resolve to give Islam one final chance, he journeyed through various countries, from Pakistan and India to the Middle East and across Europe. Searching for what it truly meant to be a Muslim, he was informed about the five pillars of Islam, the declaration of faith or shahada, prayer or salat, fasting during Ramadan, charity or zakat, and the pilgrimage to Mecca or Hajj. Additionally, he learned about the requirement of circumcision. Islam seemed demanding to him. Christianity only asks me to pray on Sunday. He mused. But Islam asks me to pray five times a day and I am expected to give to 0.5% of my substantial wealth in charity. What is this? He continued his study of Islam, becoming an expert, yet still, he felt as though he was grasping at air, not holding a tangible rope to climb towards truth. Desperately, he longed for a real connection. It was then that he considered the verse from the Quran that speaks of holding tight to the rope of God. In Islamic jurisprudence, this extended rope is understood to be the prophet Muhammad, who guides the faithful towards God's presence. Someone eventually directed him to Grand Sheikh Abdullah Faiz and Malana Sheikh Nazim. Hopeful, he set out to meet them. When he arrived, he respectfully addressed them with, Ya Sayyidi, or O oh my master, acknowledging their status and his need for guidance. Islam, he had learned teaches respect and discipline, values that seem to be lacking among some modern Muslims. Too often, he noticed a lack of respect, with young people addressing their elders as brother or comrade, a term reflecting the influence of Wahhabi ideology. While the Quran indeed states that Muslims are brothers, there are different levels of brotherhood, and respect for one's elders is paramount. He reflected on how a 15-year-old entering a mosque might casually greet an elderly person of 70, 80, or 90 years with, Hi brother, or, Assalamu alaikum brother. This, he realized, was neither discipline nor respect. Instead, the proper greeting should acknowledge the elder's status with the term like, My elder. Through his journey and the wisdom imparted by Grand Sheikh Abdullah Faiz and Malana Sheikh Nazim, the Orientalist began to grasp the essence of true Islamic discipline and respect, finding the rope he had been searching for, a connection that finally filled the void in his soul.